So now that we've got a set of devices that can store information, we want to build up a process that will allow us to create more general purpose or specific purpose um, machines that will store and retrieve information to a particular purpose. Um, what that purpose is, is general, just like our regular combinational logic design. You can build a device that will solve any general computational problem. Similarly, we can build a device that will solve any sequential problem, any device that will store information and retrieve it and do something with it. Uh, in general, though, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the information that's stored in one of these machines and how you get from storing one kind of information to storing a different piece of information. The state is the word that we use for the total uh, storage that's in that machine. So if there are two state variables, if there are two flip-flops in this machine, um, then you would have four possible states. The flip-flop could be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And then the state diagram is going to show you what states are available and how you can get from one state to the next. It is a directed graph. Uh, with each possible set of state variables being the nodes in the graph and the transitions to get from one state to another being these directed uh, arcs between these states. The arcs are going to be labeled with the inputs that are going to cause that transition and any outputs that will result from that transition. So let's look at um, an example of a state diagram for the simplest of the state machines that we can build, which is just the flip-flops we've already built. If we look at the D flip-flop, we can remember the characteristic table. And the, um, the state diagram is going to be basically a duplication of the information that's in the characteristic table. So the characteristic table was, if I have an input D and my current state is Q, what is my next state Q plus. And if we remember that table, then it doesn't matter, in fact, what the current state is. The next state will be equivalent to whatever the input is. And in my notes, I think I had D and Q reversed, but the information is the same. So what does this look like in the context of a state diagram? Well, we're going to have these two possible states, 0 and 1, as nodes in the diagram, like this. And then we're going to have transitions between these nodes based on the input available D. So if I'm in state 0 and I receive a 0, I'm going to stay in state 0. Uh, there's no output really to a D flip-flop, although the current value of its state could be considered its output. Uh, if I'm in state 0 and the input is a 1, I'm going to move to state 1. If I'm in state 1, and my input is a uh, 0, I'm going to move back to state 0. And if I'm in state 1 and my input is a 1, I'm going to stay in state 1. Those are the two possible states, and these are the four transitions. Because there's one input, each input could be a 0 or a 1, and that means each state has to have a transition for every possible input combination. In this case, a 0 transition and a 1 transition. So this is the state diagram for the D flip-flop. We can build out the state diagram for the JK flip-flop too, although it's a little bit more complicated because there's more possibilities. The JK flip-flop looks like this. Let's put them in the other order. Let's say if we have a current state of Q and our inputs of J and K, what is our next state Q? So again, we can annotate all the possibilities. Uh, those are what would happen if the current state is 0. And then if the current state is 1, uh, we have these possibilities as well. And just like we recall what J and K do, if J and K are 0, we hold the state. If K is 1, we're going to reset to 0. If J is 1, we're going to set to 1. And if J and K are both 1, then we're going to toggle the state. 0 becomes 1, 1 becomes 0. So this is our complete characteristic table. And again, the characteristic table that was in my notes had Q as a function of Q, so the next state as a function of the current state. But this is the complete diagram with all of the inputs and outputs. Now, what does this look like in the context of a state diagram? 
Well, once again, we only have two possibilities. We have a uh, one and we have a zero. And you can put them in any order. For the D flip flop, I put a zero one. Here we'll put a one and a zero. And we can just say, based on the inputs and the current state, what would be the transition? Now we have two inputs here, J and K, which means we are gonna have four possible transitions out of every state, which seems like a lot, but we'll see how it works. If I'm in state zero and I get a zero, zero, I'm gonna stay in state zero. If I'm in state zero and I get a zero, one, I'm also gonna stay in state zero. If I'm in state zero and I get a one, zero, I'm gonna to go to state one. And if I'm in state zero and I get a one, one, I'm gonna to go to state one. So there's two arcs that'll get you from zero, because again, there's a don't care here. We don't really care whether we get a zero, one, or a zero, zero. Both of these will take us back to zero. And we'll redraw this with the don't cares in a minute. If I'm in state one and I get a zero, zero, I'll stay in state one. If I'm in state one and I get a one, zero, I'll stay in state one. And if I'm in state one and I get a zero, one, I'm gonna go back to state zero. And if I'm in state one and I get a zero, zero, uh, sorry, uh, a one, one, because a zero, zero will hold, a one, one will toggle. So you can see the path that it would take if the input is one, one all the time. We just go zero, one, zero, one. And we can redraw this with the don't cares by recognizing that if I'm in state zero, I can get back to state zero by a zero and I don't care. Because as long as the J input is zero, I don't care what the K is, I'll get back to zero. If I'm in state one, I can stay in state one with a don't care and a zero, those two possibilities. If I'm in state zero, I wanna go back to state one, I can get there with a one and a don't care. And if I'm in state one and I wanna to go to state zero, I can get there with a don't care and a one. So this is the state diagram with don't cares, and this is the complete state diagram without don't cares for the JK flip-flop. So for these basic devices, the state diagrams look like this. When it comes time to constructing the state diagrams for our general purpose machines, uh, they will look more or less complicated. Some will have more or fewer states, more or fewer inputs, but the general picture will be the same.